Today, we will be discussing President Donald Trump's controversial decision to cancel plans for a secret Camp David meeting with Taliban leaders. Followed by Hollywood news, including Miley Cyrus's separation from Liam Hemworth and the newest addition to the Miss or Mission Impossible franchise. And finally, we're bringing you the latest CSUF and local news. All this and more on today's episode of The Report. And welcome to The Report, Cal State Fullerton's premier source for news, views, and info. I'm Leslie Kano. I'm Ryan Matthew. I'm Jefferson Denham. And I'm Natalie Collins. Before we get started with our first hot topic, we'd like to invite you to be a part of the discussion this semester. Click on the link in the caption of any of our report episodes to fill out a secure Google form with your opinion on any controversial issue that we've talked about now or in the past, as many of these issues are recurring and evolving. We also have a Twitter account, at the report CSUF, so expect polls, questions, and news updates. President Trump's decision to cancel his secretly planned peace summit with Taliban leaders in Camp, Camp David has sparked reactions from Republicans and Democrats alike. This, this meeting, which was scheduled for the eve of 9-11's 18th anniversary, was called off by President Trump following a Taliban car bomb explosion, which killed 12 people, including a U.S. soldier. Following his controversial decision, Trump's national security advisor, John Bolton, has stepped, stepped down. And for more on this story, we turn to CNN reporter Caitlin Collins. For John Bolton, the firing came via Twitter. As President Trump announced today, he informed his national security advisor his services are no longer needed at the White House. But in a surreal moment 12 minutes later, Bolton denied he was fired, tweeting, I offered to resign last night, and President Trump said, let's talk tomorrow. Bolton was seen by CNN cameras outside the West Wing this morning, after sources said he got into a bitter disagreement with Trump the night before. The alternative was the White House, and you wouldn't have been happy with that either. They argued over the president's decision to host Taliban leaders at Camp David, a meeting Trump later canceled. Bolton's priorities and policies just don't line up with the president. Bolton's pushback to inviting the Taliban on U.S. soil and allegedly telling reporters about his feelings after may have been the last straw, with one source telling CNN the leaking is what got him. But in recent weeks, Bolton had found himself isolated from the president, iced out by the chief of staff, and barely speaking to the secretary of state. There were many times Ambassador Bolton and I disagree, that's to be sure. Bolton was scheduled to be at this afternoon's briefing alongside Mike Pompeo and Steven Mnuchin. The president's view of the Iraq war and Ambassador Bolton's was very different. But after the president's tweet, a White House official said Bolton is no longer in the building. I like conflict. I like having two people with different points of view. Trump once claimed he liked the chaos of a West Wing with multiple opinions but he grew irritated by Bolton's hardline positions in recent weeks. I actually tempered John, which is pretty amazing. So why do you think uh, President Trump proposed this as a Camp David event in the first place? I mean, he definitely during his campaigning, he kind of had this persona as a very tough guy, very, I'm going to get what I'm going to get done and I'll do it by intimidation if I need to. I'll do it by force if I need to. And this meeting, I feel like was kind of a way to go back from that. He definitely has this image in the public, but when it comes down to it, is he really able to kind of follow up on everything he said he was going to do? Mm -hmm. And this is kind of an example of really he's not able to do it. I'm glad that this didn't happen. I'm totally upset or excited that this meeting didn't happen. We're not supposed to be negotiating yeah. with terrorists yeah. in the first place. Mm. So, exactly. I mean, but it, the fact that it had to, or we had to have an American soldier die for him to cancel this meeting is a little upsetting. And it's kind of hard to think, well, if that American soldier wasn't killed in it, would we've had this meeting canceled at all? And would Trump still be trying to negotiate with these terrorists? Leslie, right. do you think so? I mean, is that, do you think that he canceled it because of the soldier uh, and the, the bombing? Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's not a good look in, in general to even be trying to, like how he said, negotiate with terrorists. Um, and I know a lot of people were against um, the meeting in the first place. I think mm. I heard his VP was against it and members of his cabinet as well. 
Right. And I think also having it on 9-11 Eve, like that was, I think that would have been controversial and um, would have been a different issue along yeah. with the, yeah, the one soldier that had to die. Yeah, yeah. and especially yeah. at Camp David too, where yeah. that was the place where President Bush had planned these kind of counter attacks after we had 9-11. So and the fact that it's coming up too on the 18th anniversary of 9-11, yeah. that just yeah. seems a little insensitive right. too yeah. at that point. Exactly. And the criticism seems to be coming from both, uh, both sides of the aisle. Mm -hmm. Okay, so on to our next story. After using the money he had saved up for a birthday trip to Walt Disney World to purchase food for Hurricane Dorian evacuees, seven-year-old Jeremiah Bell has been rewarded for his good deeds with a surprise vacation. The young boy had been staying with his grandmother in South Carolina when Hurricane Dorian crept up the East Coast. Jer Jeremiah decided to spend the money he had saved up for over a year on hot dogs, water, and chips for evacuees, which he distributed for free. After interviewing with Good Morning America, Jeremiah was surprised by Mickey Mouse, who showed up at his house with other Disney cast members to surprise them with a free trip to the most magical place on Earth after all. Jeremiah notes that after helping feed hundreds of evacuees, he has learned to, quote, be strong, and if you do good things, you'll be rewarded, end quote. After pleading guilty in May to charges of conspiracy to commit mail fraud, Felicity Huffman is scheduled to receive her sentence by a judge on Friday, September 13th. The Desperate Housewives star is one of dozens who was named in Operation Varsity Blues, accusing parents, college administrators, and admission consultants of participating in major bribery schemes in order to rig college admissions at many top universities, including Yale, Stanford, USC, and UCLA. Prior to her sentencing, prosecutors had suggested four months in a prison and $20,000 fines, while her lawyers are asking for a sentence of only one year of probation and 250 hours of community service on top of the hefty fine. And let me tell you guys, I'm currently re-watching Desperate Housewives as we speak, and this is, I'm, 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 juxtaposing, sorry, I'm juxtaposing this, and this seems like such a plot that would happen in this show where these yeah. crazy things happen, yeah. and then kind of the next episode, we kind of forget about it. Yeah. This is something that she's not gonna be able to do, and it's just right. so sad. And let me real quick read this quote that we had, yeah. which Felicity had written a letter to the court trying to, you know, prove how sorry she is for everything. And quote, I don't write this letter to you in any seat to justify my wrongdoings, my guilt, or to avoid conscious acceptance of the consequences. In my decision to be a good mother, I talked myself into believing that all I was doing was giving my daughter a fair shot. I see the irony in that statement now because I've done is the opposite of fair. I've yeah. broken the law, deceived the educational community, betrayed my daughter, and failed my family, end quote. So yeah, I don't think there's any kind of question if she's remorseful about it, but you're remorseful about it because you got caught and Absolutely. you're now possibly Definitely. facing jail time exactly. and all these hours of community service. So, I mean, after all this is said and done, do you guys really feel like she deserves this kind of forgiveness? No, she does not deserve forgiveness. She knew what she was doing. Like you said, it's all about getting caught. So. Well, deserve, okay, deserve forgiveness. I think, are, do you mean like, because she's showing that she's contrite, mm -hmm. she is getting uh, a less severe sentence. That's probably what's happening. If this had happened in a lower economic strata, mm -hmm. uh, we would not be looking at this kind of leniency. Definitely, yeah, very true. Uh, you know, a little bit of community service and whatever, and a fine. What is it, twenty thousand dollars or whatever for their, uh, you know, in their pocketbook? What's twenty thousand dollars? Especially, how much money did they pay to get their child? the help they needed, yeah. I think $20,000 is a drop in the bucket. And I think most people are rightfully outraged by it. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that um, people like understood where she was coming from. Like, I, I feel bad now that it, like this has happened and it's come to this, but it's nothing that should be like, oh, well then let's just change your sentence. Like, it's fine. You're, <laughs> yeah, you feel bad. So I, yeah, I definitely agree with that. Like it shouldn't, it shouldn't have any difference if it was someone else. Um, besides like a celebrity. And just yeah. thinking yeah. about the severity of this all, where it, this could have been at any university, but the fact that you're using kind of all the privilege you've had from first off just being in Hollywood, Ooh. and then on top of that just being white, just all these privileges to give your child, I don't think so. I don't think that's yeah. the right thing to do. <laughs> Considering of all these, type, like especially minority communities who have such a strong struggle to enter any sort of public university, it's not right, it's not correct. Yeah. And she's yeah. definitely, I don't think, <laughs> getting any sort of sympathy from any of us right I now. Agree. But we'll see what I the agree. courts say, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, on to our next topic. A heated debate between model Chrissy Teigen and President Donald Trump was exchanged over Twitter following a town hall on criminal justice that aired on MSNBC on Sunday night. Trump tweeted that he and other Republicans should get more credit for signing the First Step Act into law. Trump then proceeded to tweet that, quote, 
Guys like boring musician at John Legend and filthy mouthed wife are now talking about how great it is, but I didn't see them when he needed help getting it passed. End quote. Tegan fired back with her own colorful insults, prompting to supporters to tweet hashtag Team Chrissy and hashtag Filthy Mouth Wife, both of which were trending on Twitter at the beginning of this week. I don't know, but I, I have my own opinions about this, but what do you guys think? Who you guys agree uh, with? Yeah. Man. Jefferson, take it away. What do you have to <laughs> Where to begin? Okay, first of all, Trump says that uh, they're not getting the kind of um, recognition that they need or they yeah. deserve, right? So if you look at the history of this um, law, this legislation, yes, it was bipartisan. But to get it passed, Trump was actually on the fence about it. Do you know who actually helped get it passed? <laughs> Our favorite know, woman, yeah. say, say her the name. names. Yeah, yep. <laughs> Kim Kardashian, mm -hmm. you know, that mover and shaker. Uh, <laughs> then Kanye West and Van John Jones, Van Jones also. So that's what kind of turned it for him. Most of the opposition was coming from the Republican Party. Uh, now, there were some on the left that were also iffy about it as well. But for him to say, we're not getting the attention we deserve, he's not getting the attention he thinks he deserves. Yeah. That's what's happening. And yeah. yeah, and I think another thing is it shouldn't be about getting attention for right. like laws that you pass. It should be that this is like this law needs to be passed and it needs yeah. to happen. It shouldn't be about attention or praise that you receive from it. And so I think that, that was good that John Legend like tweeted him back and said like yeah. Oh hey, like what are you doing on a Sunday night, like tweeting about this? Like really, this is what you're going to consume your time with. Yeah. And, I think it was yeah. even better that she tweeted back. Exactly. You know, right. even though we can't repeat what she said. <laughs> yes, go girl. Sorry, Look sorry. It up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot more to it, but that's part of it. Okay, yeah. so really. think you can't get enough of your daily caffeine fix? Well. Try visiting over 15,000 Starbucks locations. A man named Winter, yes, that's his real name, <laughs> has visited over 15,061 Starbucks locations on four continents since 1997, an act to which he chalks up to as, quote, an extreme hobby, end quote. I guess you need that much coffee to keep that hobby going. <laughs> and when he began his journey 22 years ago at a Starbucks in Plano, Texas, there were only 1,500 locations in the U.S. Today... There are more than 30,000 worldwide. It's gotten tougher for Winter to visit each Starbucks location, and he still likes to find time to visit independent coffee houses as well. However, he is committed to visit as many locations as he can, snapping photos of his coffees and uploading them onto his website, documenting his journey. His unusual order, or his usual order at Starbucks, a sample of drip coffee or an espresso. He may try some decaf. I think that might help him out. <laughs> All right, this week in Hollywood news, we take a look at Miley Cyrus and Liam Hensworth's uh, recent separation, the final Doctor Sleep trailer, and Hayley Atwell, known to some as Peggy Carter from the Marvel Cinematic Universe, joining the upcoming installment of Mission Impossible. With more on these stories, we turn to CNN reporter David Daniel. Miley Cyrus sings about giving up the party scene and apparently her breakup with Liam Hemsworth in her new video for Slide Away. Miley commented on Twitter recently, I had to make a healthy decision for myself to leave a previous life behind. When I was a kid, there was a place. A dark place. They closed it down and let it rot. But the things that live there. They come back. The Overlook Hotel still stands, and Danny Torrance is all grown up in the final trailer for Dr. Sleep, based on Stephen King's sequel to The Shining. Ewan McGregor, Kylie Curran, and Rachel Ferguson star in the final trailer for the horror flick, which arrives in theaters November 8th. Everyone knows these stories. Haley Atwell's had plenty of missions as Peggy Carter in the Marvel Universe, but her next one may be impossible. According to The Hollywood Reporter, the British actress is joining the cast of the next Mission Impossible movie, the seventh in the series. No title yet, but they have time. The film's not due out until July of 2021. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
The mysterious fire of the Conception boat that burned down a week ago is now continuing to be investigated. Distress signals were sent out in the early morning on September 2nd when a 75-foot diving boat named the Conception was reported to have been engulfed by flames. This boat was sailing off of Santa Cruz Island on a Labor Day vacation trip, and of the 39 people on the boat, there were only five survivors all of them being crew members. CNN reports that 33 bodies have been recovered while one still remains unaccounted for. It's confirmed that they found the victim's cause of death to be smoke inhalation. Recovery efforts will continue after weather conditions in the near Santa Barbara area improve. Authorities have served search warrants for Truth Aquatics, the owner of the conception, as standard procedure during the investigation. However, in taking preemptive legal action, the owner, Glenn Fritzler, has filed a lawsuit seeking, quote, exoneration from or limitation of liability, end quote, for the tragedy on their vessel ship. Happy school year, Titans. To kick off the beginning of the fall semester, CSUF held its annual convocation celebration on September 5th in the Titan Gym. This event is a CSUF tradition, welcoming all students to the Titan family and celebrating a new academic year with representatives from various majors, departments, and even clubs. This year's convocation also showcased a fun music video with CSUF president from Rose Vergy, First Lady Julie Vergy, and featured dance performances from student Imani Garner, alumna Asia Scott, and the Titan Spirit Squad as they dance their way to the Titan gym, jamming out to some Beyonce. If you missed out on this year's Convocation celebration, luckily it's, it was live streamed on Titan TV's own YouTube channel. And with that, that's all the time we have today on The Report. Have a great week, everyone, and stay tuned for more news, views, and info. I'm Leslie Kano. I'm Ryan Matthey. I'm Jefferson Denham. And I'm Natalie Collins. Stay fresh, Fullerton. Mm.